Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, it's time for some air layering. So when many people are new into bonsai, they're looking for as many new trees as possible and some good variety trees. And so they might take what they have and do some air layering if the tree just isn't looking where they want it to be, doesn't have the bonsai characteristics that we're all looking for, a really nice nabari and really good branch structure. So people will throw in the comments, hey, well, why don't you air layer that? And then when you had one tree, you could turn it into two or possibly three. So that's what we're going to do today and here's one of the reasons why we've got a really nice long leaning tree with some movement down below and they've got all the foliage up on top real skinny not a ton of taper and well here's the thing i was working with andrew robeson a couple weeks back and i brought this tree to the workshop just to get his two cents worth probably be worth a lot more than two and when we looked at this tree he instantly when he saw a tree like this more than one that day he said well have you ever thought of going with um, a shoheen tree. Why shoheen when you've got this nice maple tree with some really gorgeous leaves, they're all small already? Uh, well, it's because this tree just doesn't have a lot of good shape and form and branch structure, and it just has a long way to go. And so we consider chopping it. So here's a nice close-up of the nabari of this tree. You can see a little zip tie was tied right here. So Andrew said, let's chop it about there after this tree hardens off. So there is a lot of leaves, new early spring growth, and we don't want to chop the tree, the maple trees, then we get a lot more bleeding of the tree. And so we wait for the first flush of growth to really harden off and then we can make a chop. But why are we chopping? Well, the top was pretty long and lanky and skinny, but look at that nabari. Got a big root over here, which kind of breaks from the nice thickness all the way around here. We got a nice bump right there, kind of a bump right there and over here. And we can maybe try to add some roots over here and here down the road. But a really decent nabari with some nice movement right here for the first three to four inches of the tree. But nothing else is really worth salvaging. So back out wide, beautiful foliage. Nice tree, really small leaves. So this Japanese maple already has small leaves. These pushed out over a month ago. So this is a full month of growth and they're not going to get any bigger. So the tree genetically has some really good leaves. So why put that to waste? Maybe we can get a couple more trees out of it so we can find a place to air layer the tree. Now, another reason why I'm going to keep this tree, and I don't know for sure, I'm going to my phone for my notes because I never remember the names, but the Minnesota Bonsai Society member that I got this tree from in an auction, or no, I bought this one this spring. I got a couple varieties from him and he wasn't 100% sure, but a couple of the names that were thrown out was the uh, Nashika Gawa, which is a pretty highly sought after tree. But now Andrew Robeson said he wasn't thinking this was a Nashika Gawa. Um, but if that's the case, beautiful leaves and they're gonna turn a really nice color in the fall. I wanna preserve this tree and make a couple of other ones. And perhaps again, if I make two or three trees out of this, I, I can have this tree for someone else. I'm going with, I hope it's a, a Nashika Gawa Japanese maple. And so today we're gonna air layer this. So where would we air layer this? Well, we're going to chop it down here at the red mark so we have the rest of the tree to work with. So I could air layer down here, but most trees don't have that kind of Y split in bonsai. We don't like the Y split. And if this was the main trunk and this was kind of the uh, primary branch, yeah, this is too close together in thickness. And then it splits up here into Y and it has a whole bunch of stuff up here. So why not make two trees, two more air layers to make three trees, right? We'll keep the base as a shoheen size tree and this will shoot up all kinds of new shoots after we chop it this summer. But let's do some air layering. Maybe we get a couple extra trees out of it. So we have to find a place to air layer here and here. Let's do a couple of those. So we're close up to the tree again to decide the air layer spots. We'll do one on this thinner branch and one on this thicker branch. Now this thicker branch also splits into two, but what I'm thinking we can do is air layer it real close to the division and we can have a twin trunk. So we can have it go right out of the ground as a twin trunk instead of up a little bit higher. So if we take it right here and do our little carving right here for the air layer, there's one. And then here, this could be anywhere up this long skinny tree. Now there's a nice branch here to air layer right here. 
and this could be a primary branch someday. And that just seems like forever away because it's such a skinny little tree and that, that branch could be cut off and never even used. Or we could go way up here and air layer anywhere up here because there's another branch coming up here. And then this one also splits into two or three up here and it's got some movement up here. Um, but again, these trees grow fast. We can cut them, chop them anywhere and get growth. So we're really just air layering to get an extra tree because we've got lots of foliage up there and we can make decisions later. So I think we'll start the first one right here as I think about where to put this one here. Now as I get ready to cut into this tree for an air layer, yeah, we want to cut it right here down by what would be a twin trunk tree possibly. We're going to cut it down here. We're going to cut a good two inches. We only got about an inch of girth, so about an inch to two um, of space. So some people will put some wire around here and girdle it, tie it real tight, and then you'll get to your uh, roots from right there. Some people are just going to cut it right here. I'm just going to use the cut method today on this tree. It grew fast. It has lots of energy. I think it's going to shoot out roots just fine. We'll, <coughs> excuse me, we'll cut it right here. Now when you air layer and put your bag around here with sphagnum moss, you're going to want the tree to maybe be more this angle, which means the pot's sitting up like this which means all the water might drain to one side, so it's kind of a tricky spot to do an air layer. So if I do an air layer like this, all the roots and all the water and moisture is going to come down to this side, and this might be drier up here. So I'd like to have this as straight as possible. So I probably will uh, prop up the, the tree a little bit, and so we have a little bit more of a flow even this way. If I do it straight up and down like this, the tree will be very challenging to keep watered uh, at a nice balanced level. So let's start uh, carving this out. So again, I'm going to go right below the, the, um, the spot where this tree splits. And we're going to go ahead. I'm going to use my nice sharp blade here to cut a little ring around here. And my first cut doesn't have to be perfect. Once we get rid of some of the uh, bark and the cambium layer from around this whole tree, that I'm cutting, we can go back and make some more nice, even cuts. So we have as neat of a scar as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel some of this away. What I'm doing now is scraping away some of that uh, cambium layer, getting down to the hard woody substance of the trunk of the tree. And if you don't have a long enough gap between these trees, sometimes the tree can heal itself and reach over and close off and callus up and you don't have a successful air layer. I want this top side to be as clean as possible and as uniform as possible. So to prepare for this project, I had to have some sphagnum moss on hand, which I did. And I was able to uh, take apart the sphagnum moss, break it into smaller pieces. We're not going to get into the real super fines, but we're going to break it up and so it into some medium-sized chunks and strips. And so after breaking that up and making sure that it's getting all nice and wet in the bucket of water, we are ready to put some sphagnum moss in our plastic bag that's going to go around our newly cut tree so we can make our air layer. So I have a very simple common freezer bag and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make a cut with my blade because it's easier and I have to wrap this around to hold the sphagnum moss and this obviously is going to be the hardest part of today's activity ah there we go there we go now I want it to wrap around the tree, so I'm going to go have to go ahead and cut this open. So we'll cut open the side with my straight edge because that's going to be the best. Now I have kind of a wrap around 
go like this. I'm going to tie that off and we've got our pouch to go around our tree. I don't like the rigidness of the uh, Ziploc section, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. And now we should be ready to go. We've got this little cone shape that kind of gives us a starting point, and we can wrap our stuff around here. And then get this uh, tied around with a little bit of wire to hold it in place. I want the bulk of the sphagnum moss to be in here. Okay. Now that my bag is pretty much ready to go, we're going to put it around and just make sure that we're liking what we see here. And I can connect this down here with some zip ties, or in this case I'll use some aluminum wire. And then we've got our little pouch there for sphagnum moss, and then we'll just make sure this all gets nice and closed off, and we will have this uh, pretty, pretty tight around our tree. So before we put the bag on there and start stuffing sphagnum moss in there, we are going to put a little hormone powder around the bottom here where we're going to expect our roots. So I've got some water here with this sphagnum moss. I can use this as a sponge. Get this all nice and wet. And we're just going to go ahead and very liberally put some of this sphagnum moss, or not, not sphagnum moss, hormone powder over our cut point. So the under part of my hand was able to stuff some of the uh, sphagnum or the hormone powder rather underneath this tree part and I got a whole bunch of powder right there. I'm going to go ahead, we're going to put a little bit of sphagnum moss in this already. Because that's going to cup that bottom section. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and get my other part of my sphagnum moss ready, or the top part. And now I have sphagnum moss wrapped around that entire section. Alright, so the first thing I want to do, I want to take some of my wire, and I want to wrap it around the bottom part of this bag here to hold in, block some of those air pockets, close it off. So just by hand, I'm going to make this as tight as I can get it to hold this bag in place. I'm not twisting any wire to make it super tight and pinch into the tree per se. This is just holding the sphagnum, holding the wire or the plastic bag in place around this section of my air layer. And you can see that holds it in, in place pretty well. So I have the rest, the rest of my bag here. I'm going to get a little bit more sphagnum moss. I obviously have plenty of sphagnum moss, but remember we're doing two today. And I'm going to go ahead and throw a little bit more down in there. There we go, bring it up here, and make this nice and tight. I'm going to tuck this bag in and around here and bring this bag over here. And here we have the second part of our air layer to wrap some wire around. So I'm going to grab some more wire. We're going to go around the more top section of this tree. Now I want to be careful in this top section of the tree because I don't want to scar the top part of the tree right here because that's going to be the tree we want to keep, the part of the tree we want to keep. But again, this is just to hold things in place. I'm going to go one more time around this middle section. So we have a little bit of a loose bag there. So we'll put this nice and tight. And 
And there we have it earlier, covering. There's the. There's where the important part of the ear layer is, where the where the first part of the branch that I scored away. That's got the hormone powder in there and the sphagnum moss tight against there. And we've got uh, this ready to go. I think I want to tighten this one a little bit more. So now that it's on there real good, I can readjust. And I don't like this one, it's just a little too loose. So let's make sure this is good and tight around here. Air layer one is complete. I've got it nice and snug down here, I've got it nice and snug here, and I've got a wire around the middle here just to kind of keep it compressed against that area. There's uh, hormone powder in there. The sphagnum moss is now amongst this plastic bag that this is gonna act as a greenhouse, right? These warm, hot days are gonna create some uh, moisture in there, keep that sphagnum moss uh, wet. Uh, residual watering and rain might drip down there in a little bit, but uh, it's gonna be just really self-contained by the, uh, the greenhouse that's going to get wet and moist every afternoon and then dry off a little bit at night and then it's going to get wet and moist uh, the next day. So there's air layer number one to save this part of the tree. So now the next air layer is going to be up here. So we have to make some of those same decisions and go ahead and air layer number two. So looking at this part of the tree, there's nothing super attractive. Down here is way too low. This part right here has at least some subtle movement of this main branch here and we cut these off. And so if I air layer right below here, there's actually another branch here. But if I air layer down here, we have a little bit of movement at the base of the trunk. Now over years and years of growth, that will slowly dissipate, but at least it's some movement. And then we can make our decisions after that about the tree. So we'll, get, we'll go ahead and score this down here and repeat the process. Well, there we have it. We have a tree that could become three trees in the next six to 10 weeks. Now, these maple trees will produce roots very, very fast. I'm gonna leave this on until I see roots poking through these bags here uh, at the surface of the bag to see if I can uh, be patient and wait for a lot of roots to grow. And then we'll cut this right off down here and here and we'll stick those into some pots and then we'll hopefully they root up the rest of the fall or late summer, fall, and then next year in the spring, they'll just shoot out a whole bunch of new growth and then we'll do something the year after that perhaps. So here's our two uh, spots. Now again, we're gonna try to put this in the yard so it's a little bit slanted, but I'll have to be careful when I water. I probably can water it normal like this, let it all get watered, and then I can tip it back up like this for when it dries out, and we'll get these trees to have a little bit more balance with the root structure. Because if we have it all slanted like this, all that moisture is gonna collect in the bottom and it could make us some, some odd distribution of the roots. So, we're gonna keep this wonderful nabari, wonderful nabari for a new tree, for a shohin sized tree. We're gonna get these two as new trees. I'm gonna make a twin trunk out of this one and then a single trunk out of this one and then I'll keep them for myself or maybe we'll uh, have some other people own these trees down the road. So it's another scorcher in Minnesota today. We've had temps in the 80s. We're pushing maybe 90 today or tomorrow. So I had to get this done early in the day to avoid some of the really, really nasty heat. But we're in good shape now. All this heat is actually gonna be perfect to get this thing on a road to recovery. With all the moisture that's in the sphagnum moss already, it's gonna sweat uh, because of the uh, greenhouse effect with the warmth today. And these new roots will hopefully take off very, very soon. So there we have an air layer, job one done for today. We probably have a ton of other things to do, so we'll have to investigate that. That's going to do it. Hey, take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and we'll catch you all in the next one.